I've never been one for shooting a lot of landscapes. It's always been people. I was only interested really in filming movement. I'm always looking. I've been filming everything from ballet, whirling dervishes, all types of martial arts. This whole thing about people spinning or revolving. Any gigs I'd go to, I'd film, just for myself. I'd always film whatever was there that was good. Rainbow Stepper was from that whole Jamaican tradition of stepping, but he's got very particular moves of his own. That's the gear shift. <laughs> See how that footage connects? <laughs> Should they even do a bit of breaking? Do you see that? There you go. It does make you look at breakdancing in a different light when you see that like, oh hang on, it's part of Burundi culture. I'm looking at where have these moves originated from. See the way that, look, the way that joins, the, look. Yeah? Did you get that one? With dance at that time, it was developing along with the music. And here in the jazz room was another form of dance that was different to any other dance floor in London. It had elements of traditional jazz dancing, but it had started to incorporate bits of breaking, bits of popping. I was interested in the development of the dance. They'd take it in turns to present their moves, rather like they would in a breakdance circle. I was wanting revolving still. That had led me on into filming the hip hop scene at that time. There's a lunchtime session in Oxford Street on Saturdays that a lot of young kids used to go to. It's almost like that aspect of battling with your break dancing in a circle and one person going in, followed by the next to try and better it. It was like a dance competition. A bit of Grandmaster Flash. Again, I'm, you know, I'm filming for the moves. I'm always filming for the moves. I'm not trying to record their act. This section I really like. The skinhead movement had sort of been appropriated by the right wing. They were generally getting a lot of bad press and being totally misrepresented in that way. My idea was just to like hang out with them, make a simple film of it, to try and demystify it. They are just youths. That did very much come from the mod culture, and I'm not talking about people riding about with hundreds of lights on their scooters wearing parkas, which is like not what the mod culture was about where I came from in South London. I love skinny girls haircuts, I think it's superb look. These fears and paranoias are through people not really knowing, so I think if you show them, it helps. I think film can work in that way. Just a door coming to Kinko Kalinki because it just is like the wackiest world, and I see all my friends here and they're wearing spooky outfits. <laughs> So we started a club just to have fun and started with all our friends and it just grew. Galinda wanted to return glamour to London nightlife, basically, so that was her remit. It drew quite a wide crowd. It weren't just a gay crowd. It had that real mix. People arrived looking amazing. <laughs> they went out physically being dragged along by a string of pearls or whatever. Real drag as I saw it. The superstars could appear and mingle with the crowd. They were in competition with them, really. It's very much a visual thing. It's more like what you are rather than who you are. British Vogue likes to keep its pulsating finger on the G-spot of British fashion. That's why we're here. Ciao. It was a fierce catwalk competition that anybody could enter. 
And the judges would be people like Jean-Paul Gaultier, Vivian Westwood, Anthony Price. Yeah, it was a serious fashion event. It's just great fun! I was always interested in filming club culture because I thought it was a massive part of London culture and something that would come and go. This is what's happening now, you know, who knows what will happen next week. That's what's so exciting about life. <laughs>Thanks to me, Jamaica has a complete circular track because I had to fly bits that were missing of theirs in from Miami and then I left it there for them. They'd asked me if I knew a reggae singer that would work with them. I suggested Horace. The rest is history. I'll only do commercial work if it's people that I like and they ask me because I'd much rather just get on with my own thing. This is when the rave scene started. 94. It's pure drum and bass. Just pure quality, isn't it? It's just, you know, it's delicious. It's happening all the time, isn't it, with fashion and dance. Things don't stay the same for long. On the cutting edge, things are always on the move. I've shot hundreds and hundreds of hours of film. Maybe they could be construed as one or two documentaries, whether it's about a particular artist or a particular time or a particular style of dance. That can be broken down in infinitesimal ways. I'm an artist filmmaker.